Good evening and welcome to the Cigarette Burn series. We're talking about the greatest films of all time. Um, this one, uh, this week, or whatever you want to call it, week or whenever I post these, it just really depends, is uh, Jordan Peele's Get Out. All right, I'm going to show you the box for this. Okay, um, I'm sure that a lot of you have seen this. This is almost a brand new film, especially in my personal view, because I start film way back at uh, 1900 okay um, so uh, I'm gonna talk really briefly ab uh, about some of the setup for this and uh, I will say that this will contain probably some things that will be considered spoilers I suppose um, if you've not seen it but if you've not seen it by now I don't see why it really matters to you because it's been out for quite some time now so I can't imagine why you would want a spoiler for or not want a spoiler for this um, I apologize for wearing my glasses. I went to sleep with my contacts last night, so um, there you go. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. Get Out. Why is it one of the greatest films of all time? Well, to be honest with you, um, because it's so new, it is very, very hard to say, but I can say with confidence that it is. Um, the reason is, is because um, it is masterful writing, masterful on the level of Hitchcockian writing, and in many ways, uh, there's two things that need to be said about that in terms of Hitchcock. One is that Hitchcock did not write a lot of his own stuff. Okay, Most of it was adapted um, from other things, like The Birds. It was a Delphi de Mure novel. Um, also, um, a lot of it was... Um, uh, I, I can, it's, Psycho was a novel. You know, there's a, there's a thousand things that were adapted from, uh, from a book. Um, that he did. Okay, so yeah, his major contribution, Hitchcock's, is what I'm talking about here, not Jordan Peele's. Okay, Hitchcock's. Okay, uh, contribution was mostly visual and mise en scene. Okay, and now I'm going to break down what mise en scene is because it's going to be very important to understand that in terms of where I'm going to talk about and get out and the direction that took place there. Mise en scene is a fancy way for saying director in French. That's what it means in French. Um, but in American terms of film knowledge, what it means is every visual and auditory element that you hear in a film, okay? Because there's two distinctive branches to filmmaking. There is the producership and there is the production of it, okay? The producers run much as a business. They are running the business, us end of it, the HR, the whatever you want to call it, making sure... Uh, the unions are all taken care of, you know, blah, 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 all the business elements of it, okay? But the actual thing that you see on screen and you hear on screen, and even to a certain degree what is edited on the screen, okay, whether you take shot A or shot B from scene one, um, is up to the director to a, to a very, very large degree, to a very, very large degree, okay? Let me pull this down a little bit because you can't see my hands. Oh, there I am. I'm so beautiful. Okay. So, um, Hitchcock was in charge of the mise-en-scene um, of his film. So, that's what he did. Okay. Now, obviously, he, he helped adapt the screenplays, but he was working with existing uh, works. Okay. Similar to when you see the Oscars, if you even watch the Oscars anymore. Who knows if you do. It doesn't matter if you do or not. It makes zero difference to me. Um, but uh, you have the adapted screenplay that wins and the original screenplay that wins, okay? So they consider it two separate things, okay? If you write an original story, you should be uh, held to that standard, whereas if you write from an adapted, you should be held from an adapted. I totally 100% agree with the Oscars on that. I think that those are two very distinct categories. But this, Jordan Peele's, is an original screenplay. He wrote this entire movie himself. Whether or not he had help or anything like that is not clear. I'm sure in, in more of the commentary and things like that, they explained a little bit more of the process that went behind it, but it doesn't matter. Ultimately, he, had, he has the authority because on the back of the box, it is him, okay? So whether or not he bought it from someone else and readapted it for him, it doesn't matter. It is his original screenplay. And he was in charge of the mise-en-scene, okay? That is impressive on a level that cannot be described, okay? I can only think of a handful of directors who use their own original material and uh, are good enough 
in the actual direction to be called master directors. Okay, um, One of them is Shyamalan. A lot of people disagree that Shyamalan is a good director. I don't really care. I think he's a good director. Um, I can base that off several film related uh, things, but that's fine. If you choose to think that his twists are ridiculous or whatever, that's your choice, and, and I don't care. Um, that is your choice, and you're basing it solely on the story, which is fine. I think his stories are masterful, okay? I don't think all of them are by any way, shape, or form. And you have to understand that Jordan Peele is new to the circuit. So this is his first film, okay? Think about Shyamalan's first film, which was The Sixth Sense. I don't think anyone would argue that that was a great film. That's very, very hard to argue that wasn't a great film. Um, so, you know, you have that, okay, going, okay? So, what we're talking about here is the mise-en-scene, okay? Now, when I talk about that, I'm talking about, I think about five distinct categories, but they can blend in together. You have acting, okay? You have set. You have sound, whether that be soundtrack or what's going on in the actual sound world, uh, the voices and blah, blah, blah. You have camera, okay? And you have costuming. Those are all basically what he is in charge of, okay? The, the director, that's what he's given responsibility over. That is definitely a heavy burden for anyone. Um, because you're running a production that is costing millions upon millions of dollars. Time is of the essence. You know, if you need a shot outside during the day, you have to get that all cleared up. Where the cameras have to be in place, you have to know where the director or the actors are going to stand. You have to know how the lighting is so you can shoot it well. There's all kinds of technical aspects that go into that. Now, obviously, the director is not in charge of every element of that. Um, the cinematographer definitely has major control over the cameras. Not maybe the movements or where they're placed, but in terms of lighting and different things like that, absolutely. Um, they, they both work together to find those things. But, um, back to Jordan Peele for a moment and how impressive this was. Because I don't want to understate this, okay? Um, this was as good in suspense as I've seen Hitchcock do, okay? It was. It was just as good. Um, was Shyamalan as good? Yeah, but he was telling different kinds of stories, okay? Um, his stories were not based solely on suspense, okay? Suspension of disbelief and the... Uh, and childlike innocence and different things, those all play into Shyamalan's motifs, okay? Whereas Peel is talking strictly about basically two, two things as far as I can tell, which is race relations, okay? And the second one is uh, telling a great suspenseful story based on that, okay? So, you know, even if you take the race relations out of it, this story stands on its own as being one of the more masterful films ever made. I would actually put this, I know it's early, so don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm doing this early, so it's definitely prone to error. I would put this in about the 150 range, maybe even into the hundreds. It is possible, just like Sixth Sense is up and around that area. Um, this one, I think, is even better than Sixth Sense for, for a directorial debut. I have not seen a directorial debut this good for a long time. A long time. Um, there is nothing that this film lacks in any way. From start to finish, ass to elbow, this film is complete in every way. There is not too much that is in it. There is not too little that is in it. It is so beautiful to look at. It is so suspenseful to watch. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. And when you finally find out the reason for what is going on, you have to kind of sit back for a moment and be like, oh my God, that is the weirdest friggin' thing I have ever seen in my entire life. <clears throat> and that is just as simple as that. Now, obviously, I'm talking about it as a new film. Okay, so, you know, the, the mystique will wear off. I get that, okay? But I would like to point out what this film is, in my opinion, similar to, okay? Which is, it's like Psycho in a way, for sure, but it's weirder than that, okay? Because Psycho, the, the reason that Psycho is so good is because it can happen, okay? 
This one, you can believe it can happen, but there is a bit more suspension of disbelief, just like with Shyamalan's films. So this is kind of a hybrid between Hitchcock and Shyamalan. If you don't like too far out, and if you don't like too real, this is the one for you, okay? It's not far out, and it's not unreal. So that is what it is for you, okay? Um, I, I just, I can't, I can't explain it any simpler than that. If you have not seen this film, please do. And he's getting ready to release one literally in about a month that looks almost as good, if not as good, as this one. So I am on the edge of my seat to see what happens with this one. I believe the name of it is, um, uh, give me a second here. I'm trying to think what the name of it is. Us. Just Us. U.S. That is the name of it. Please watch the trailer. It's fantastic. I'll even include the trailer in the link, uh, so you can have a. Uh, or I'm sorry, in the uh, in the in the page, so you can go to it and see the new film that he's doing. And you can rent this one, or you know, off the TV or whatever. You can buy it. I I buy DVDs because I prefer to have a living copy of them, just in case. Um, uh, I don't like the fickle nature of of uh, these corporate uh, places that hold uh, video libraries now. I don't want them to collapse and all of a sudden all my video library is gone. I prefer not that to happen, so I get an, my own physical copy until they're gone. And then I'll have to find a video library and hopefully be able to move it to my own library um, on uh, uh, some type of memory thing, which would be fine with me. And I'll transfer all of my DVDs into uh, that library as well. But I cannot stress to you the quality that went into this film. Um, the only thing I'm truly worried about Jordan Peele is, is it's similar to a lot of artists that are very, very smart and good when they first start out. Is that they keep topping themselves and topping themselves until they don't or they burn out. Okay, um, If you're that talented, like I think he is, then he's going to get burnt out. Okay, Because he's gonna, he can top himself every single time. But there's a point where you're just like, God, I just don't, I don't even want to look at a page right now. There's just too much, okay? Um, and that's what I'm worried about because, like, when someone sees, like, if I was a producer or someone that would make films, an executive producer, and I saw him and he's in the horror genre, you better believe I would want one of his scripts, okay? And that, that goes without saying that most of them probably do, okay? So, you know, I just hope he doesn't get truly burnt out in the process of doing this. Because he is talented, and I would hate to see him go that way. You know, it happened to uh, uh, several artists. Um, well, the most recent example is probably Dave Chappelle. Um, he was so talented on his show, The Chappelle Show, that he literally just collapsed under the weight of all of it. Because he, he just consistently outdid himself until he just finally lost interest in it. And now he barely does anything anymore, but when he does, it's very, very high quality, as usual. So I just hope that doesn't happen to him. Um, that is my wish for him. Okay? So um, uh, I will leave it at that. Feel free to leave your comments, um, always, um, and so on and so forth. Have a good day. Thank you very much.